I'm Ken Hamilton with Biominerals Technologies. We're looking at compost and all the benefits we can receive from using compost in our soils as a soil amendment and a way to revitalize the life in our soils. Microbiology is the foundation to a healthy production system. Soil biology control the chemical, which is the mineral. They also control the physical, which is soil structure. And they also control the biological properties of all soils. Every living plant that functions in these soils needs this triangle of chemistry, physiological structure, and biology to grow, reproduce, and produce nutrition. The soil food web is crucial for a healthy, productive soil. We have to have the different tropic levels of all the microorganisms groups functioning in not only the decomposition of the plant, but the control of pathogen, along with the nutrient production that comes naturally. We have the organic matter, which is from decomposing plants and animals. We get into the living organisms such as bacteria and fungi which are your main decomposers. And then we get into the predatory type organisms in your higher levels that are your protozoa, your nematode, your shredders, your micro and macro orthopods. These all have an interplay relationship in a healthy soil system. They all must be there for your soils to be functioning. Many farmers and producers are told that nitrogen is the most important mineral element in our fertility program, but it's not. Actually, the most important component of plant growth is CO2 or carbon dioxide. As you look at plant growth and structure over time, a plant may emerge with 10 carbons to one nitrogen. As it goes through its growth or vegetation stages, that carbon increases up to 20 to 1, 30 to 1, and even 40 to 1. By the time these plants start get into reproduction and maturity, we're reaching 50 to 1, 70 to 1, even 100 to 1 carbons to 1 nitrogen. This means that we are accumulating carbon dioxide at 10, 20, 30, 50, even 100 or more times at the rate that we're accumulating nitrogen. When we look at dead senescent plant growth, it has carbon-nitrogen ratio of 100, 250, 400, and more carbons to one nitrogen. And so it really is the carbon dioxide production that pushes plant growth. Yes, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium are all necessary, but they are not the driving forces behind plant production and plant biomass. Carbon dioxide is more important to high yield potential than nitrogen or any mineral element. When we look at plant dry matter weight, let's examine the components within that plant. Carbon occupies 45% of the plant's dry matter weight. Oxygen, another 45% of the plant's dry matter weight. Hydrogen, 6, and nitrogen, on average, about 1.5. When you look at this, just carbon dioxide is responsible for at least 90% of the total plant's dry matter weight. Your other elements, such as magnesium, potassium, calcium, phosphate, sulfur, comprise about 2%. But the main structure within our plant is CO2, carbon dioxide produced by microbiology. Soil microorganisms and higher plants is an 80-year compilation of research that is, in essence, the definitive Bible on soil microorganism and plant function. In this research, it is replete over and over in specifying that the most important component of the soil atmosphere is carbon dioxide, the final decomposition product of organic matter. The intensity of the biochemical processes taking place in the soil can be judged by the amount of carbon dioxide released. The formation of carbon dioxide depends to a large degree on that microbial metabolism. 
Everything that favors the growth of microorganisms increases the generation of CO2, carbon dioxide. Having the right balance of microorganisms under the plants and the crops that we grow is absolutely crucial. You can't have the proper pH or nutrient transfer in that plant's root system without the right microorganisms being present and functional. The balance of biology is absolutely critical when we look at our agricultural and our farming soils. Proper plant growth requires the appropriate balance of bacteria and fungi as per the species or cultivar of that plant. For example, weeds prefer far more bacteria than they do fungi. Grasses, in general, three bacteria to one fungi. Vegetables, for every bacteria, there's almost one fungi. However, in our row crops that we're used to growing, the proper balance of bacteria to fungi is a one-to-one -one ratio. When we get into woody plants such as vines, whether they're grapes or blackberries or blueberries or such, the ratio now switches to being fungally dominant, meaning we will have five to ten times more fungi than bacteria. When we get into fruit trees and deciduous trees, decorative type trees, they're as high as 200 fungi to one bacteria. In conifers, it's as high as 500 fungi to one bacteria. And in the old growth forests and the cedars, it's as high as 1,000 fungi to one bacteria. It's extremely important to have the right biology with the plant types that we're growing. Without the proper balance of biology, your plants will not have the nutrition that they require. They will not have the proper pH in the soil. They will not have the protection against pathogens and they won't develop the growth potential and the yield quality that is in that DNA structure or divine blueprint within the plant's potential. When I test soil properties, we do a biological analysis, which is a direct microscopy count of the soil microorganisms in that soil or the root system of the plant. The proper balance for row crops, which is our corn, our soybeans, all of our cereal grains, the proper balance is one bacteria to one fungi. We often find in row crops that we will have as high as 1,000 bacteria to one fungi. This ratio is so completely out of whack for proper plant growth and health. The chemicals and the methods of farming that we typically use are very detrimental to the fungi. Putting a properly made compost back into a soil is to re-inoculate those missing microorganisms so that the ratios come back and become much closer to the proper balance for plant growth and health. The carbon to nitrogen ratio of soil microorganisms holds the key to nutrient cycling for plant nutrition. If we look at how nature designed these different trophic levels in the soil, we have all of these groups functioning in a very miraculous way. Bacteria, on average, are five carbons to one nitrogen. Fungi, on average, are about 20 carbons to one nitrogen. Protozoa, they're like you and I. We're 30 carbons to one nitrogen. Nematodes? can be upwards of 100 carbons to one nitrogen. When we look at our micro and macro orthopods, our shredders, and on up to earthworms, all of them have a wider carbon to nitrogen ratio. And this is how biology cycles or produces nutrition in the soil. 
When we talk about carbon to nitrogen ratios of these various trophic organisms, it isn't just carbon to nitrogen, it's also carbon to phosphate, carbon to potassium, carbon to calcium, carbon to magnesium and sulfur and the trace elements such as boron, manganese, iron, zinc, copper. All of these minerals are held within specific ratios in the varying groups of microorganisms. And this is how nutrient cycling occurs. When we have a predator such as a protozoa who is 30 carbons to one nitrogen, who primarily feeds upon bacteria, which is five carbons to one nitrogen, these microorganisms have to maintain their carbon to nitrogen or carbon to mineral ratio. Now, for a protozoa to accumulate 30 carbons, he has to eat six bacteria. But that also increases his nitrogen content from one to six. Protozoa can't keep six nitrogen internally. They excrete five nitrogen in the form of ammonia, NH4, back into the soil. As they excrete that which they do not need in their mineral ratio, it becomes plant available. So as protozoa consume bacteria, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, sulfur, magnesium, and trace minerals are all being made available through the process of the predator-prey relationship. Nematode primarily prey upon fungi. Fungi, 20 carbons to one nitrogen. Nematode, upwards of 100 carbons to one nitrogen. Nematode are going to have to consume five fungi to maintain their carbon-nitrogen ratio of 100. They have then increased their nitrogen ratio to five. They can retain only one. And so four nitrogen are excreted into the soil as NH4 or ammonia. This occurs up and down the entire soil food web trophic chain of microorganisms. One organism is eaten by another and another and another and another. We understand this principle very well in the ocean. Big fish eat little fish. And there is no difference in soil structure. It's the same concept. Except what we are doing is we're releasing minerals in an organic form and a restructured form for plant nutrition. When you learn to reproduce your fertility instead of buying it, your profit potential increases exponentially. As farmers or producers, we're conditioned to buy our nutrition or our mineral fertilizers from suppliers. However, in a functional biology system, Nature provides a way for all of those minerals to be made available in a plant available form through the cycling of microorganisms through the predator-prey interaction in our soils. That process costs a fraction of refined chemical fertility. Plants with the proper nutrition have a genetic potential to produce yields far beyond what we're seeing with conventional fertilizers. It's amazing what a well-made compost will do as a soil amendment. Adding compost to our agricultural soils is a vital and important step in restoring those properties that we've lost through modern agricultural practices. The biology, the additional minerals, and the carbon sources that we, do, we so desperately need to have a healthy soil.